Look at the bloody state of this. Picked up a screw in the yard. By the time I realised, and it started vibrating enough for me to realise it wasn't just something in the boot, this was the state of it, fortunately. Fortunately I've got a quick and easy spare, that means I haven't got to take the one off the back. Got that in there for a set of them for another project, so don't get me out of a muddle. sorted out. Well, I guess that puncture links in nicely to one of the two topics of this video, doesn't it? Breakdowns and yields. Just before we get into that though, I did tell you a little fib in the last video. Technically, we haven't quite finished harvest. There's just one more big job on to get that done. The mighty Sampo 2010 is mopping up this trial to finish things off. Let's talk breakdowns then. We'll start with this old girl. She's not normally much trouble, bless her. And this season was no exception. Good run, really. Lost probably the equivalent of a couple of hours here and there. Had a little bit of an issue with uh, some joiner links on this chain. Had a couple of them break. It was a new chain last season so this is the second season so i need to try and get to the bottom of that it looks to me like the joiner links are the wrong way round so that the basically the nut comes through this side near this lip and that's that's probably catching on there and putting a lot of strain on the on the joiner bolt had a joiner go on two separate occasions and it was just a case of putting a new joiner in basically and off we went again. I only went in one place, the chain never came apart on all three so it, it didn't cause us any major issues. That is a clean grain elevator at the top of that. There's an inspection cover and a little hole wore through that. That stopped us for getting about an hour Fortunately, we were quite close to uh, somewhere where we could weld it up. So we got that welded up, got that put back. Big thank you to Nick at Harvester Parts Limited because we were actually about five minutes away from his yard there and he was kind enough to sort that out for us. There was, of course, the piece of sieve I found in my returns. That turned out to be the pre-sieve. That's the only sieve that I hadn't changed on the combine since we've had it. Upper sieves and lower sieves had been done. Uh, upper sieves were new last year for last harvest, lower sieves f five or six years ago, I think. But again, wasn't uh, wasn't anything that actually gave us any real downtime. Just had to get a, get a new one sorted and swapped it one morning before we started. We did a rather major repair on the auger before harvest. Any of you who have migrated over to this YouTube channel from TikTok will have seen a video on that. But that's held up nicely, so we must have done a good job. You can see that bit there that's welded. Yeah, it's held up nicely, so pleased with that. 
850 acres through the old girl this year, so all things considered, I think she's done fairly well again. Then of course we've got the two carting tractors. We have got the plucky little TSA 135. That did have an issue, but again, not a not an issue that gave us any downtime, but it was something that we just had to sort out one morning. Basically what happened, coming down the road, started to make a horrible noise. Turns out, a couple of the bolts had snapped that hold the fuel tank on. That in turn pulled the cab mount over, so the cab was vibrating on the cab mount. So I'll show you how we rectified this, because we only had, we have about two or three days worth of work left locally so we rectified that with a good old ratchet strap strap over there over the top of the engine and there we go through there under there and hooked up on the back of a frame and that kept her in place and there's another job to add to the list of workshop things need to drain the tank drop the tank get that out of the way which is quite helpful actually because i've got a new fuel sender unit that needs to go in because it's got a dodgy fuel gauge so that'll make that job easier and drill the bolts out and put some new ones in and jobs are good un. then of course the t7 t7 210 2014 she was no bother at all one minor issue and i think that was from the field field in the last video which i said was extremely rough i think just rattling about shook some probably a little bit of dirt up out of the bottom of the fuel tank and you've got these little glass little glass bowl small sort of small filter in a little glass bowl essentially just in here picked up a bit of muck in there started to started to play up a little bit just felt like it was a little bit down on power as you would do when your filters are getting to a point where they need changing just took that out and gave it a blow out with a combine compressor and away she went and she was all good she's due a engine oil and fuel filter change anyway so that'll be one of the next things that's on the list but yeah she's good as gold now for the exciting bit let's talk yields no pub yields no nonsense actual yields i've got winter barley winter oilseed rape and spring barley weighed over the weighbridge they've left the farm so i know exactly what they've done i should be far more happy with these crops than i am because they all did really well this year i think anything that was drilled early and looked good generally ended up being pretty decent the winter barley did 9.78 tonnes a hectare that was a second cereal following wheat on light land the spring barley was actually pretty phenomenal I did mention in uh, I did mention in a previous post previous video that we haven't ever seen any of these really big spring barley crops sort of your nine tonne hectares plus and I've got to eat my words a little bit now because the spring barley this year did do 9.12 tonnes a hectare as an average. Now that ranged from <clears throat> 7.5, the worst, to 9.7 as the best. And the oilseed rape did 5.12 tonnes a hectare. Again, that's the best average we've seen for some time on that, if not the best. I don't think we've actually averaged over 5 before, I think the closest we've got is 4.9 something, so that is good. I don't know what uh, don't know what the prices are going to be on either of these, any of these yet, because they're all on a harvest pool, because I have not got the room to store them, so I just leave the merchant to do the marketing on that, and this should be a sensible year to be in pools, due to the fact that all the market's done, coming up to harvest has fallen. So. Yeah, the price remains to be seen, but the reason I'm not very excited about it is due to the price. I know that the spring barley is probably going to be about 170-ish pounds, roughly around that. It might be a bit more, but got several quids worth of deductions to come off because some of it got harvested when it was a bit wet. 
Nothing above 15.4 is the worst, and most of it under 15, but malting barley is 14.5% or under. So we took, uh, yeah, took some drying charges for that, which are a little bit on the nasty side of things. And I've ran the numbers on the spring barley just for, uh, just for a bit of a comparison, really, of what it's going to do, margins-wise. And 9.12 tonnes a hectare at £170 leaves a net profit of roughly about 8 or 10%. Which is shocking really, when you consider that is a fantastic yield for spring barley. It just shows you where the prices are, where they need to be, and the cost of growing these things. Even something like spring barley, which is cheap. I mean, 90% of the land I farm is rented, so I have to factor in, factor in a rent cost, which obviously makes a big difference. But yeah, it's, uh, there's a reason why uh, farmers are pretty down and gloomy at the minute. And that brings me on to the wheat, which has been a really mixed bag. Second wheats have been pretty terrible on uh, on the lighter land. I didn't have any on more bodied land this year because of how the rotation fell. So my yields on wheats have ranged from 5.2 tonnes a hectare, which was a second wheat that just never got going on light land and really did suffer, all the way up to about 12.6, 12.7 on a first wheat after potatoes on one of my nicest fields and the average has come in at about from the combine figures about nine tons a hectare so when you think about the margin that the spring barley has created which is a notoriously cheap crop to grow and that's done 9.1 tons a hectare if the wheat has ended up at nine tons a hectare with a lot more growing costs attached to it and also is going to be commanding a similar price to malting barley there's a chance i'm hoping i might be able to get somewhere between 10 and 20 pound a ton more for it it just depends what the markets do they're terrible at the minute but you're looking at harvest movement at the minute for feed 162 i've got all mine in a soft biscuit contract so it should have a minimum of a 10 pound premium on it and i won't sell anything off my own back that i've got left to sell and later later in the year early next year I'll just see what happens and see how things change I like to think things can't get any lower price wise but I've been saying that for the last month or two now and <laughs> they've still managed to drop so yeah when you uh, when you factor all those things in it's quite concerning the the combine yield monitor tends to read a little bit low so it's been anywhere from sort of two to six or seven percent low so far with the crops I've had out of the store so I don't know how that will fare up on the wheat, but I'd imagine that that 9 tonne a hectare should be the lowest end of the estimate. If it's 5% out, we might have done 9.5, but yeah, where prices are at the minute, it's not very exciting, is it? And uh, I know in this area we've fed a lot better than some other parts of the country, so I certainly feel the people who have been in the even drier areas that have ended up with a lot lower yields, because even with what we've managed to get, it's, it's still not looking very good, let alone people who've still got two thirds of that, if not less. One thing I didn't want to do on here is shy away from sort of talking about facts and figures, really. I mean, using using wheat as an example again, for our for our business on on all the rented land that we're on, I really think you you need to be turning over about two grand a hectare to have a chance of being on the right side of things, you know, getting a bit of profit in the bank to reinvest going forwards and, you know, just keeping the business in a sensible position. Nine tonne a hectare average, if that's where we end up, hopefully it'll be a, a little bit more than that. But say nine tonne at 180 pounds, that's just over 1,600 pounds a hectare. So that does not leave you on the right side of things. And there's really nothing driving markets in the right direction at the minute. We all know anything could change, but it's probably, at the minute, it's probably at a point where it looks the least likely that there is anything going to change it. All the news that's coming out is going towards keeping the price down. When you couple that with the ridiculous price of everything these days, I mean, you can take machinery and fertilizer as two of your prime examples. I mean, machinery's phenomenally expensive these days. 
and fertilizer how on earth how on earth that opened up at a higher price than it opened up the previous season with where wheat markets are I have absolutely no idea it's just scary really that as well as many other things coupled with the loss of SFI which I mean we don't know if we're going to get back which was a fairly important lifeline for a lot of farms uh, you can understand why people aren't overly happy at the minute but farming's been through some difficult times before and I guess we just got to hope that something picks up sooner rather than later because I was thinking about it the other day and there's you know there's really nothing to stop this going on for several years is there unfortunately need a massive weather event somewhere or you know something equivalent to happening in Ukraine again where the ports got shut and that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of things that we rely on unfortunately to push prices up trouble is with everything being on such a knife edge you're relying on you're relying on everything to be perfect crops wise and that is well this year's a prime example that that is just not realistic anyway sorry to end on a bit of doom and gloom there but it would be very counterproductive to only talk about the good bits and not the bad bits and that is the sad reality of where we are at the minute so we'll just have to see where things go won't we but i hope you enjoyed the video and a little insight onto the numbers side of things and the breakdowns and if you did enjoy feel free to give the video a like and click the old subscribe button for me thank you very much catch you next time